Have you ever wanted to increase your own level of happiness? Or maybe you'd like to do something in particular to help raise your joy and well-being. Or maybe you've always wanted to experience an Ivy League education without the commitment. Yale University is offering an online course called The Science of Well-Being, where Dr. Santos reveals what actually makes us happy and recommends tips and exercises for increasing happiness in our lives, such as savoring our everyday experiences and appreciating them while they happen. Did we also mention that over 3 million people have enrolled and it's the online equivalent to their most popular on-campus course. The course is completely online, self-paced, and the best part yet, you can earn a certificate from Yale upon completion. So make sure you click the description box below to check the course out. Hey, Psych2Goers, welcome back to our channel. Have you ever wondered if there are some habits you could adopt to make your life a little bit happier? According to psychologists and research studies, there are some interesting habits that may just leave you feeling a bit more cheerful. Here are six helpful habits that will make your life happier. Number one, read stories of wonder. Do you love to snuggle up with a good book and a cup of cocoa? While chocolate tends to make a lot of people happy, that story of wonderment you're reading may just make you happier. According to a 2012 research study published in the journal Psychological Science, awe can be elicited from reading a story, even a short one. Researchers Melanie Rudd, Kathleen D. Voss, and Jennifer Aker explain in their research article that awe offset the feeling that time is limited. And this increase in perceived time availability heightened willingness to volunteer time. And it accentuated preferences for experiential goods and lifted satisfaction with life. They further explained that their studies also demonstrated that awe can be elicited by reliving a memory, reading a brief story, or even watching a 60 second commercial. So that inspiring book you're reading or that adventurous play that has you hooked, keep reading. Your life may just be a bit happier with an awe inspiring book and it keeps you present and in the moment. As the study states, experiences of awe bring people into the present moment and being in the present moment underlies awe's capacity to adjust time perception, influence decisions, and make life feel more satisfying than it would otherwise. Sounds good to me. Number two, drink a healthy amount of coffee. Ah, who doesn't love a good old cup of joe? I know I do. Many studies have found a link between how much coffee you drink and a lowered risk of depression and suicide. In a large 2011 longitudinal study, Researchers found that depression risk decreases with increasing caffeinated coffee consumption. They mentioned further research is needed to confirm their findings, but a good cup of coffee every now and then won't hurt your mood and alertness. Just make sure not to go overboard. Too much caffeine can be dangerous, folks, but just the right amount? Mm, delicious. Gotta love those mochas. Number three, don't focus on materialistic goods. In her book, Myth of Happiness, Author Sonia Lubomirsky explains that a mountain of research has shown that materialism depletes happiness, threatens satisfaction with our relationships, harms the environment, renders us less friendly, likable, and empathetic, and makes us less likely to help others and contribute to our communities. While a new pair of shoes here and there won't hurt you too much, if obtaining these types of possessions are all that's on your mind, it could cost you a bit of overall happiness it's best not to put the weight of our happiness only on obtaining these luxury goods. Make it a habit to instead look towards your values, socialization, self-fulfilling goals, and experiences as another way to get that euphoric feeling. Basically, do what makes you happy. The things without that expensive price tag attached to it. Number four, make it a habit to be around happy people. A 2008 study from the researchers and professors James H. Fowler and Nicholas A. Christakis found that if you simply live within a mile of another happy person, your happiness could increase by 25%. The researchers wanted to discover if happiness can spread from each individual and whether niches of happiness form within social networks. According to the study, people who are surrounded by many happy people and those who are central in the network are more likely to become happy in the future. Longitudinal statistical models suggest that clusters of happiness result from the spread of happiness and not just a tendency for people to associate with similar individuals. A friend who lives within a mile, which is about 1.6 kilometers, and who becomes happy, increases the probability that a person is happy by 25%.
Although these effects weren't seen in coworkers, the authors also mentioned that similar results were seen with happy spouses and neighbors who are within the mile. Time to thank your friendly neighbor for lending you that cup of flour and thank them for a bit of happiness. Number five, join clubs and participate in cultural activities. Thinking of joining a club or snagging those tickets to your favorite concert? One research study found that those participating in more cultural activities and clubs reported decreased levels of anxiety, depression, and an increase in one's general satisfaction with life. The 2011 study examined data on cultural activities, perceived health, and overall satisfaction with life on over 50,000 adult participants from Norway. According to their research, their results support hypotheses on the effect of cultural activities in health promotion and healthcare. Time to join the art club. Number six, keep a journal of your feelings. It has long been believed that journaling can have a positive effect on one's mental health. Writing down your feelings each day is a great habit to adopt. According to University of Wisconsin-Madison, health psychologist Shilag Mergen, PhD, therapeutic journaling has proven effective in the treatment of those experiencing post-traumatic stress and trauma survivors. The benefits also extend to those living with chronic health conditions such as asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, chronic pain, and even those who are chronically poor sleepers. She also explains that there is a growing body of evidence that demonstrates the beneficial effects of writing. Just 20 minutes at a time over four consecutive days was associated with a decrease in health problems, such as enhancing the immune system functioning. Hmm, so it might be a good idea to write a bit in your journal before bed and then divulge into that awesome book you've been reading. So, which habits will you adopt? I'm working on journaling and it really does seem to help. Do you journal before bed? Which book will you be reading? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and share this video with a friend who could use it. Subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell icon for more content like this. And as always, thanks so much for watching. If you like the tips from this video and want to learn more about how to increase your own well-being and productivity, then you should check out the science of well-being. A big shout out to Coursera for sponsoring this video and offering a course from Yale University to our viewers. You can earn a certificate from Yale upon completion, so make sure you check it out.